Maririnig natin sa ating ibanghelyong binasa sa umagang ito that uh, while her own preferred self-designation sa ating mahal na biren ay handmaid of the Lord, hindi yung ating uh, sinecelebrate na memorial, Queenship of Mary. Napakalayo po, handmaid of the Lord mismo ang kanyang binanggit nung nag-goodbye na siya doon sa anghel. And she marveled that the Lord has looked with favor on the lowliness of His servant. Maririnig naman natin yan sa kanyang magnificat when uh, she visited her cousin Elizabeth. And later generations did indeed call her blessed and piled honorifics, mga titles, upon her kagaya ng sa makikita o mababasa natin sa Litany of Loreto, which lauds her in symbolic titles such as the Tower of David, House of Gold, Ark of the Covenant, Gate of Heaven, Morning Star. Diba? Makikita ho natin yan sa Litania. But what Mary herself would have thought of such great titles cannot be guessed, but they satisfied the devotional needs of pilgrims making procession in her honor. And during the Middle Ages, Our Lady was venerated as Queen of the Angels and Saints. Tagal na hong panahon yun, Middle Ages pa. Finally, five years after declaring the assumption of the Virgin Mary into heaven by Pope Pius XII in 1950, at the close of the Marian year of 1955, she was proclaimed as Queen. Kaya nga sinecelebrate natin ang pistang ito today, an octave after uh, the assumption of the Blessed Virgin last week. The feast was dead, dated on August 22 to stress the connection with the Feast of the Assumption. And today's Gospel suggests that if Mary now reigns with her Son in heaven, it is because she gave herself over to God's purpose for her earthly life as did Jesus, her Son. And there are many stories of vocation, tawag para sa ating mga nilalang dito sa, la, uh, dito sa mundo, in the Gospels and in the Bible as a whole. Today, we read about the call of Mary. Kaya nga makikita natin, Our Lady of Manawag. Now she is calling us, pilgrims from all over the world, hindi lang man dito sa Filipinas. But at one time, she also received a call. And Mary displayed a whole range of responses to God's approach to her. Diba, sa umpisa, she was deeply disturbed at being called God's favored one. Kagaya rin natin, nag-iisip din tayo. God's favored one who would conceive and bear a son. Then she questioned how this promise would come about and it was only after reflection that she surrendered to what God was asking from her. Sabi niya, let what you have said be done to me. How can this be? It is clear that Mary had to struggle with a dilemma before reaching her famous response, so vital for our own destiny. There is always an element of struggle in reaching our own understanding of what God wants from each and every one of us. And Mary's response of total surrender to God's purpose for her life did not come easy to her and does not come easy to us the same way. However, in our struggle to live in harmony with God's purpose for our lives, we all have the assurance of Gabriel's word to Mary. 
Nothing is impossible to God. Marami ho ang nagpupunta dito sa Manawag at alam na natin yan. Kuminsan ang mga hinihingi ay imposible. Lalong-lalo na kapag merong napakalubhang sakit o di kaya napakabigat na suliranin sa buhay. Sometimes they themselves will say, imposible, di ba? But remember that word, those words, nothing is impossible to God. What may seem impossible to us is always possible with God's help. And we can all come to make our own the words of St. Paul. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace toward me has not been in vain. Sana ay ganyan din ang ating response kung ano man ang tawag sa atin ng Panginoon sa ating panahon, sa ating buhay. We now stand to offer our prayers and petitions.